On today's episode, we reviewed the latest ratings news from our key sports network. We grade infielder Nick Madrigal, and then we close out with another new hitting coach. That's all ahead on Locked On Cubs. Our Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Cubs alongside Sam Albright, Matt Cozy. Pleased to be with you for a Tuesday episode, a full show. Please check out our bonus episode on some injury updates on Cubs prospects from Monday. Uh, thanks for making us your first listen every day. We're lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. We are recording here on a Monday evening, Halloween evening. Sam, how was your day and your your holiday. Yeah. Uh, Halloween's always a special one for me. Same day as my mom's birthday. Um, so it's always been kind of a double celebration. Well, when I was a kid, a double celebration. I'm a grown man now, so there's not really much celebrating for Halloween. I had one trick-or-treater. Wow. What happened, folks? I mean, I used to just count down the days till I was about 13 for trick-or-treating. I had one. I gave- She was about a four-year-old girl. I gave her four Reese's. Um, okay, one great. Of the best, like yeah, great. One of the like best, you're really excited about that. One of the best candies. Um, I want to make it would one be quick, would be in the final four of candies if I made a bracket. I want to make one quick announcement before we get going. I just want to say right. that I was a little bit apprehensive about the whole off season going into it. I thought it might be a little. I wasn't. You know, I just was like, man, what are we going to talk about every day? And so far, I'm having a blast. I just wanted to say that I was. I was listening to a couple of our episodes last night because I couldn't sleep. It was a really rough day for me. Um, okay. And man, I just really. I, I almost have enjoyed them just as like we're in the middle of the season. I think it's because. During the season, I'm so reactive game by game. Mm-hmm. So, like, when we have a bad game, especially you'll see this year, guys, because you haven't really got a chance to listen to me when we're, we're in season and I really feel like we have a chance to do something. You know, it ruins my whole day when we lose, and it kind of affects the episode. <laughs> and so lately I've just been much more clear-minded, and I've just really enjoyed doing the show, and I hope everyone has enjoyed as well. That's all, no. that's all I have to say. All right, well, some early gratitude, it sounds like, from Sam Olber as we enter – the month of November, where uh, Thanksgiving resides later this month. We'll be expressing a lot of thanks around that time. Uh, yeah, it's been a fun off season so far, and, and we're ready to roll uh, with another week as well. Give me a new host. <laughs> and go Hawkeyes, by the way. Yeah, sure, so, sure. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was a good Halloween on my end as well. Oh, I, did not yeah, cel- I did not celebrate it one bit. All right, now on to the program today. Uh, big story over the weekend. Uh, it was actually during the week last week from the Chicago Tribune on Marquee Sports Network. So, Sam, uh, we, we always enjoy talking about this network, and uh, we seem to, to strike while the iron is hot. We want to do that again. So I'm going to rattle off some info. This is from uh, Robert Chanick of the Chicago Tribune, who did a lot of great sourcing for this, too. Uh, Mike McCarthy, president of Marquee, and also Crane Kennedy, president of business ops for the Cubs. Crane Kenny. Uh, were quoted in the story as well. So Marquee, Mike McCarthy's the co- coach of the Cowboy. Uh-huh. Yeah, same name, different guy. Yeah. Marquee debuted in 2020 with a 3.57 rating, uh, which equates to about 116,000 uh, households per game. Okay, 116K households per game. In 2021, ratings dropped 41%, so from a 3.57 rating to 2.1. And then in 2022, ratings dropped another 25% to a 1.57 rating. So since debuting, Marquee has dropped full two points. Revenue is also down slightly, 168 M's in 2021 to 161 in 22, but... Ad sales are up 3% from year to year. Uh, There's a big kicker to this story. I want to wait a minute or two for that. Be careful with your mouse. 
because oh I don't I'm not I don't have my mouse oh, actually. Okay. That's just a little hard to hear you. Oh, it is. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. Yeah. All right. Let me let me figure that out while you, while you respond here. But yeah, yeah, no, um, no. I can hear I can hear you clear. It's just there's just a little chop. It looked like you were touching something. It's, we're good. Oh, you know what? I was. I was. Oh. That's uh, my my fault. So yeah. uh, I don't have my mouse today because my battery died. So I got to yeah. get a new battery, folks. Yeah. Um, and if, if let me know where I could get one of those. So, uh, Mark, I can respond if you'd like. Ratings are down, but we know why the baseball product is bad, right? Exactly, right. So I saw a statistic. I should have I should have remembered it. Somebody tweeted it from an official account right, that right. revenue was up like a significant amount in comparison okay. to the two thousand no to, into the two thousand fourteen season. Oh. And what, why, why use that? Because that was the last time the team wasn't competitive. Right. So, so you can make the case, that, you know, it, and it was TV. It was, it was comparing NBC sports, Chicago, or at that time, Comcast to marquee, but they did, they did more money this year than they did in 2014 through Comcast. So look, we've, good. we've talked about marquee um, a lot on the program. We'll continue to, it's not a good product, but that, when the Cubs are good here coming up, you'll, you're going to still see a major jump in ratings because people want to watch the Cubs. Okay, so let me just go to my my keypad here. Yeah. Here's the biggest part of the story in my mind. Yeah. The Cubs are receiving $90 million from Marquee on an annual basis, which is a dramatic increase from the $60 million through its old deal with NBC Sports Chicago. That's what I read. That's what I read. Ninety million. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the context and the numbers. Um, all I oh know. Oh my is, gosh. All I know, yeah, and, and only half of that goes to Hayward. All I know is is that um, <laughs> uh, uh, that the Marquis not a great product, but it's not going to impact. The Cubs are not broke anymore. Those days are over. They have money to spend. They're going to spend it. They're going to get, you know, imagine what they're going to do when that 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 2.1 or whatever it is jumps up over four again. That's going to happen this year. doesn't yeah. matter who. It, it could be me and you on the call talking about Halloween, and people are going to want to watch this baseball team. Well, don't joke. I would love for this show to be simulcast on Marquee. Yeah, well, you know, speak up for it's us, a guys. Great, it's a great size show. They can fit us in a half-hour slot. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, people are going to watch. People are going to watch this team. I, I agree with what you initially said. I think looking at those numbers is because it's a bad team uh, this year. Like, How many people besides our fans or our listeners and you and I were watching every single day in September? I mean, come on. Nick didn't even watch. You know, it's They're like cozy. People, yeah. Yeah. People, people were moved on. They weren't like trying that hard if you to, to, to watch it. So right. I wouldn't be too concerned uh, about those numbers. I know you want to talk about them because you're a media guy. Everything, as I always say on this show, will be solved with winning baseball games. Game on. Huh? Um, hashtag game on. Hashtag. Let's move on. Okay. So I, I do hold on. There's a few yeah. other things. Let me just go back to my pad here. Yeah. So Marquee is available on cable in about three million homes in a four state regional uh territory, Illinois, Indiana, then parts of Wisconsin and parts of Iowa. Uh Xfinity, Direct TV, and others also available via streaming on Direct TV Stream and Fubo TV. But the other big news in this Tribune story was that as soon as 2023, the Cubs might offer a direct to consumer option. If that happens, Marquee would be available to everybody in its home market, so parts of those four states, at a fixed price via an app. Uh, the Clippers just did this. This month, the LA Clippers launched Clipper Vision, a regional subscription streaming service offering the vast majority of their games to California viewers for 100 uh, for 199 per season. Um, so just just a tick below $200 per season. Um, so so viewers who have don't have cable who have, who've cut the cord so to speak um, but don't have direct TV stream or Fubo TV, 
it's possible that if you're in this area, you can watch the Cubs, but you'd have to pay a good amount of money um, for that marquee app. But I, but I think they should pursue that because uh, the more options, the better, right? Yes. All right, very good. Uh, we will follow up on this if that breaks over the off season and, and other stuff with all things broadcasting. Also, a quick other media note, since we all know that I am a media uh, nerd. Uh, today, there was some breaking FM radio news in Chicago as 93.9 FM, the station that moves to Christmas music every year, yeah. is moving on Tuesday. Yeah, That's they, tomorrow. Yeah, they do that too, every November. Uh, Tuesday, November 1st, the uh, quickest format change in station history. Uh, usually it's something like November in the teens, uh, but too early. It's too early. Maybe tune in for best and worst in the week later uh, later in the week for, for more, more on that coverage. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Iowa played an exhibition game today in hoops. Did uh, they? Illinois. Yeah, Iowa and Illinois both. Uh, start up a week from today on Monday, uh, the seventh, I do believe. Also, any early lines on the Illinois Michigan State till uh, opened up at ten and a half and then spiked to sixteen for the Illini. So really good things. Wow. Okay. Holy smokes. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcast, and in depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in at all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we start right here with another player grade. This time, second baseman Nick Madrigal. Slash line of 249, 305, 282. Out of his 52 hits, 45 were singles and seven were doubles. Say that slug one more time. Say that slug one more time. 282. Puts the ball in play a lot, but doesn't get on base enough. He was great in August. Uh, Hit 300 with the 378 OBP, eight walks, seven Ks. In 91 plate appearances, the rest of the season was pretty dreadful. Played pretty solid defensively at second base. Sure. Um, But he had to show something this season, and he didn't. I am going to wait to give my grade until you say something about his season uh, because I'm going to be pretty harsh. Go ahead. So I'm in a good mood today. I can tell. It's Halloween. It's it's (sighs) fall. I, I love right. the. Co- not, I love the. Not, it's not fall anymore. It's we only have two seasons now: summer and winter. I love the way the quarterback for this city has been playing, <laughs> um, and I'm I'm just in an overall better mood. So because of that, instead of giving Nick Madrigal the grade I initially was going to give him, which is an F, I am going to give him an N slash A. Oh um, please! Yeah. So so I'm. What, what's that stand for? Not applicable. Yeah, not available. Oh, not available. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I, he just didn't play enough. He was coming off a serious hip injury, um, and then he never he he never could stay healthy. But the problem is 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 really not staying healthy should be involved in his grade. Um, this NA might cost him a roster spot on this team next year if the Cubs – at least a starting spot. I still like him as a bench piece, and maybe that will be easier on his body long term. But if the Cubs go out and sign one of these shortstops and move Horner over to second base, I don't see a place at all for Madrigal outside of being a utility backup infielder, which may be good for him because I could see him coming off the bench late in games, help out defensively, and then you know, you're know you down one run. you got a man on third, one out. Who better to come in and pinch hit and beat a drawn in infield than Madrigal? Because Lord knows he's not going to hit it over the outfielder's head. So I do think there's a future Correct. there. But in terms of his um, – you know, his grade, you know, it, it was bad. I'm going to be nice and just say the guy had a serious injury, came back, had a, had a really good month of August, then got hurt again. So I'm just going to leave it there. 
Well, it's a good thing we're doing this grade as recording on Halloween because besides August, uh, Madrigal was basically a ghost in 2022. Right. Right. And, good one. Uh, thank you. I uh, I watched some really nice Halloween movies this weekend. Really? Like Hocus Pocus or something? Uh, so I watched Hocus Pocus 2, Halloween Town, and then um, my mom's got a date with a vampire. Disney classic. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, by the way, and by the way, I just want to remind everybody, I am single. Keep going, please. So I, I am going to give Magical an F. An F, okay. Because he didn't pass the class. Right. Anything above a 60%, D minus or above, you pass. You go on to the next year. He has to repeat this class. Right. There, he, he, didn't, he didn't do enough. Where, where was this guy at? Injured. He was hurt a lot. And and by the way, you know, doing some of my homework today on this on this brother here, um, <laughs> he was severe. You know, he has severely limited experience at the major league level. Severely, yes. Did you terrible. know that he only had three hundred and twenty four plate appearances in the show entering this year? He hit three forty in twenty twenty and three hundred five in twenty one, but he only played in twenty nine and fifty four games respectively. He doesn't even have his driver's license. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. And we're not talking about Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. No, no, you're right. It's I an mean, F. Holy I'm just trying to be smokes. nice. No, I'm just trying to be nice. You want to know what's funny, Matt? And funny is not the word I should use. It's um, not comedic. I, 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 you want to this know what's serious stuff about I'll this say team. What's, I'll say I'll use the word interesting. Last Casper, year. Casper Madrigal. Last year. Serious question. Last year. CM. At the trade deadline, going into that deadline, who was the most valuable trade piece for the Cubs last year? Not this previous year, the year before when they traded the core guys. Well, who, I think who, who was having the best season? Well, it was it was probably uh, Rizzo or or or, or Kimbrel? Kimbrel. The answer is Kimbrel. Yeah, Kimbrel was the best reliever. He had like a zero point six four when the Cubs traded him. He was and dominant, I, and I remember saying to you and to many people, "That's got to be the biggest haul." And it actually ended up being the worst deal. They got two major league players. <laughs> they got two major league players, and, and you know, off the you know on the surface, it's like okay, this this seems fair. And yeah. neither guy, you know, both because of injuries, right? It's it looks like the worst deal by far from the core guys, and. Wow. Look, the hardest thing to do when you're a general manager and you're in front and you're working front office, the hardest thing to do is to forecast injuries, right? You right. do your homework. You know a guy has a history. And look, Cody Hoyer, Tommy John, and, and you traded for Magical while he was already hurt. So there was definitely implied risk in there. So Jed is not excused mm -hmm. if this deal mm -hmm. doesn't pan out. But sometimes you just, you just don't know, you know? And um, it's crazy because – you know, the, the bet the best deal right now looks like it was Javi, then probably Rizzo, then KB, and then fall off a mountain and get to Kimbrell's deal. And right. I know it's I know it sounds a little bit weird now because Kimbrell didn't even make the Dodgers playoff roster, but last July he was a a, a wanted commodity. We'll see what Madrigal's role is in 2023, whether it's the bench or a starter or or dare I say uh, something else. So uh, we'll have to stay tuned uh, for that. Coming up next, the Cubs with their 15th hitting coach in 10 years. <laughs> Stick around. We're, <laughs> we're back here on Locked on Cubs. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. I don't know. That was a factual tease. It wasn't even... Wait, I know I delivered it. You know, that's that's or, not no, that's not. Is, are you serious? For the 15th time since 2012, the Cubs will have a new hitting coach. I have it in my rundown. Are you kidding me? No, that was they, a serious thing. I can't name 15 hitting coaches. Of course not. There's too many. No, are you serious? Yes. Oh, that's that's. It's an really, embarrassment. No, that's. I thought you were joking. I'm not joking. No. I mean, I'll double check after the show, but yeah. 
Well, there's no need to double check right now to introduce the hitting coach, and I'll check. Greg Brown is out. Dustin Kelly is in. Brown was still under contract and offered another role in the organization. Uh, but it, it, so the jury's still out if he'll accept it on, on that. Uh, 2022 was Brown's first year as a major league hitting coach, and the Cubs had envisioned him helping young and older players through the process. But Dustin Kelly, who was the Cubs minor league hitting coordinator the last two years, takes over in the show, and he joins David Ross's staff in the Cubs dugout on the north side. Kelly previously spent time with the Dodgers and the Red Sox. Speculation is that the Cubs were worried they were going to lose Kelly to a major league position with another club, so they elevated Kelly themselves, and now Kelly is moving up as the top prospects, in theory, move up as well. Uh, they've had a lot of success on the pitching side with Craig Breslow, um, and I think they're trying to do the same thing on the other side of the ball now. Um, but Greg Brown was only here for a year. There was, I mean, there's been a lot of hitting coaches that were only here for a year when you rack up 15 on uh, 10 years. I got, um, but, but here's a new one. So here's what I got in front of me here. Starting yeah. in 2012, hitting coach in 2012 was, was Rudy Jaramillo slash James Rousen. Okay. There's two then, guys. Then in 13, it was Rousen 14, Bill Miller. 15, 16, 17, Maley. 18, Davis. 19, 20, Iapochi. I don't know. It doesn't have 21 and 22. Okay. We obviously know those. So it's what is it, like like nine? Well, I could have swore I saw in the athletic it was 15. Maybe it was 15 since a little bit of it earlier. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's still a joke. It is a joke, but 15, I, you know, I thought you were exaggerating. No, I, no, I'm not trying to. So. Yeah, uh, you want me to Welcome comment on aboard, this? Welcome aboard, Dustin Kelly. You want me to That's comment the on this? Sure. Yeah, I don't have much. Um, I hope <laughs> I, I, you know. I, well, the hitting was bad this year. I want to see. I want to see I him work. Greg with, Brown should be fired. I want to see him work with Fran Mill Reyes. See if you could unpack his power more consistently. Um, there you go. You know that would be something to look because some of these guys just are who they are, right? But Fran Mill, you know, for, exa for example, you remember Chris Bazio, the pitching coach? Do I remember him? He was part of a dream team coaching staff. Yeah, so Bazio almost like made Jake Arrieta his project and, and, and helped turn him into one of the greatest pitchers that this organization has ever laid eyes on. And 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 uh -huh. I you know, and, and I think that you know uh -huh. if you're a hitting coach. You know, pick a guy like Reyes that ha has a lot of raw tools. Great example. If, he, if he's on the team, and, that you can work with and make better. Nico Horner is who Nico Horner is. I, you know, yeah, yeah. Can you can you try and hit, get him to hit a couple more homers? Sure. You know, and work with Suzuki on. Hey, you know what? Certain situations, I want you to swing at the first pitch and, and be a little bit more Correct. aggressive and less passive. Little things like that. So hopefully he could get those out, uh, get those out of guys, and we see those improvements. Um, but overall, you know. I, I'm sure Greg Brown was trying to do the same things, but to me, when you bring in a new hitting coach like that, the, the one guy I got an eye on is Fran Mill Reyes. Interesting. Okay, that's a great he's, angle. So. He's just got so many raw tools. I don't understand why he hits the ball on the ground so much. Yeah, I think it's that's a very fair uh, sentiment. So somehow we did uh, – Might not even be did, on the team. Somehow we did 24 minutes, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And um, the other thing I, we want to say is that uh, for Wednesday's show, we have a very special episode. Oh, okay. Wednesday is the six-year anniversary when the Cubs won the World Series. Yes, I remember that day. We are going to take all of Wednesday's episode and review the World Series, including zooming in on Game 7. And you know, just of course, quick, Wednesday is also Sam's birthday. Quick preview for the for the episode, please. I could be wrong on this. I'm almost positive, though, actually, that Game Six was on a Tuesday. I think Game Seven was on a Wednesday night. Was it? I'm almost positive because it was a Tuesday or Wednesday. No, ah, no, shoot. no, no. It is. It is because the Bears played that Monday night. They hosted the Vikings on Monday Night Football. It was the last time Jay Cutler donned a Bear uniform in a victory. Um, and oh, then wow. th that was the off night between games five and six. And then game six was a Tuesday. Game seven was a Wednesday. 
And just a quick preview, those two days I did not have a meal. Really? Out of nerves, yes. But I'll talk about that t- on tomorrow because it was my birthday. I had some great stories from that day. Oh, that will be uh, – uh, looking forward to that episode. It will be a joy to do that show. Yeah, no, you. I was physically sick for 48 hours. Go Cubs! Huh? Be sure to hit the subscribe button, Locked On Cubs on YouTube. Smash the like button and all your favorite Locked On Cubs content. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your pods on the audio side. And drop us a text, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen. Now make your second – the Locked On Sports Today podcast. Locked On Sports <laughs> Today is our twenty-two minute <laughs> is our twenty-two minute recap of the previous night in sports. Come on, finish up. It features local experts on each of the big stories, as well as the take of the day from one of the Locked On hosts. Please mute your mic next time. Also, um, the mustache might be making a return as soon as tomorrow. For Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.